Hey everyone, I'm Jane Reeves. It's March in Maastricht. What does it mean? It's TIFAF. The European Fine Art Foundation, which started in 1988, is the organizer of the event. It's one of the most reputable fine art fairs in the world, known for its strict vetting process. So if you buy something here, it's guaranteed, well, as much as possible, that this is the real deal. Over 7,000 years of art history is featured here and there are 270 exhibitors from 20 countries, but enough with statistics. Let's go in. For an art connoisseur, it's an eye candy here. Ancient art, armor, paintings and sculpture, or jewelry and porcelain, tapestries, furniture and ceramics, tribal art, Islamic art, and modern art. It's simply impossible to cover everything, but I'd like to start with old masters. Here is Dr. Taylor of the Dickinson Gallery. Um, Dickinson Gallery was founded in 1993 by Simon Dickinson, who was previously head of the Old Masters Department at Christie's for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And it expanded in 1995 to do uh, some Impressionist and modern paintings. And so we now have quite a broad range of paintings, works on paper, and sculpture from the Renaissance through to the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And what do you have today? Uh, so again, we've brought the full range of uh, the gallery's expertise, um, mm -hmm. and we always try to bring some things that would be of interest to the crowd at TAFEF. So mm -hmm. for instance, we have this beautiful scenic from a private collection that's the Port of Rotterdam, which we thought a Dutch audience would really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And in the back, it's probably the highlight, right? Uh, yes, on the far back wall, you can see this wonderful sergeant double portrait, mm -hmm. uh, which is extremely elegant, uh, comes from an American private collection and hasn't been publicly exhibited in about 70 years. And wow. the family depicted the Burkharts, were very close friends of the artist, John Singer Sargent. And this work was painted just after the Madame X scandal. The painting of Virginie Avenue was considered scandalous at the Paris Salon in 1884 due to the daring gown. Sargent was forced to leave France after that. He even repainted the strap later. When they were demonstrating uh, their support for him after he was forced to leave Paris by the bad reviews. Um, if you want to want to look at an old master mm -hmm. um, example. This is a wonderful still life by um, Klaus Haida. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's, it's quite an exciting thing to have at the fair because we didn't know when we planned to bring it that the silver cup in the painting is actually exhibited on another stand here at the fair. Oh, wow. So, um, in fact, you can reunite the two pieces. The cup was in the artist's studio and appears in a number of his still lifes. And how has the show been for you? It's been great so far. It's been very busy. We're all a bit weary so far, but um, we're enjoying seeing a number of friends, and it's so good to be back after, obviously, a, a few years that we weren't able to attend. So uh, the crowds are excellent, and we're really pleased to be here. Conveniently located on the second floor right next to the bar area is the showcase section. It features newer galleries. Meet antiquarian book dealer Pingel Rare Books from Paris. First of all, congratulations. I know this is your first year participating in TIFAF. Uh, please tell me about your experience. Um, so thank you very much. So this is our first year uh, at TIFAF uh, showcasing uh, here in Maastricht, so it's a great honor for us to be to have been selected among the ten other uh, galleries. I understand this is not a new gallery. You are third generation, right? Tell me a little bit about the business. Yes, absolutely. So we've been operating uh, in the antique business uh, since uh, the 1980s. Uh, my grandfather set up the, the company, and my father uh, took over before I joined the company uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we specialize in uh, antique books, uh, illustrated books, so from uh, natural history to cartography. Um, yeah, those are the main uh, areas where we operate. Okay. And what's the period? Is it like from Renaissance? Uh, up yeah. So, so basically, we we have books uh, from the 14th century. Uh, till uh, the 20th century, but what we deal with the most is books uh, from the, the 16th century till the 18th century with the great discoveries, uh, the voyage, mm -hmm. and uh, the evolution of cartography uh, throughout this uh, period. So what, what, what we exhibit here is uh, a collection of pieces that uh, all have their 
very interesting stories to tell. Take, for example, this first printed map of the world. It's called TO map for Terrarum Orbis. It looks like letter T within a circle O, which represents the ocean. And it has only three continents, Asia, Europe, and Africa. And it's east-oriented. By the way, this is Russian River Don, known as Tanais back then. The map was depicted this way by Isidore of Seville in the 7th century. You have the 16th century with the great, uh, great atlases, uh, then the 17th century, uh, the golden age of Dutch cartography represented here with three uh, very nice pieces, uh, including a very nice map uh, of China, a uh, manuscript map uh, made by Gerry de Ham, the chief mapmaker of the, the Dutch East India Company. And I also see in the back there is a very nice painting. Can you please tell me a little bit about that piece? So this painting represents uh, Vincenzo Maria Coronelli. It is actually the only known painting uh, that we know of, uh, of him. Um, it was made in 1684. So at the time, Coronelli was in Paris. He was doing his uh, magnum opus. So it was the globes of Coronelli that you can see at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. So these two large globes of four meters diameters uh, and two tones, uh, they, they were made for the kings. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, it is, it is quite huge. The whole, the whole room is filled with the, the two of them. And so at the same time, uh, the portrait of uh, the, the cosmographer was made by the artist who, made, uh, who painted the globes, uh, Arnaud de Vuez, who is a French artist, so also involved in the globes. Well, uh, congratulations again. Maybe we'll see you next time in New York. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Good luck. Next on my list is one of the blue chip galleries I've been wanting to talk to for a number of years now. This time, I hope I'm in luck. So I understand that uh, you've been busy. You've been uh, to Vermeer in Amsterdam. Yeah, Tell I did. I was, I was lucky enough to get some tickets to uh, yeah, the Vermeer show, which out. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Vanessa, I'm so glad that you finally agreed to speak to me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me a little bit about your wonderful gallery, when it was established, by whom, what generation it is. Uh, the gallery was established in the late 1800s by my great great grandfather Nathan Wildenstein mm -hmm. who lived in Alsace at the time and moved to Paris at the moment when Alsace was about to be annexed by Germany mm -hmm. because he felt extremely and deeply French um, and he began sort of by accident and everything you know he he started he sold some pieces for a client and uh -huh. with a commission reinvested immediately into more art and that was that was the origin and I am now the, the mm -hmm. fifth generation Mm -hmm. in a long history of art dealers. Okay. And now the gallery is based, I understand, mainly in uh, Paris, in Paris, right? No, 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 not at all. No, no, we don't have a gallery in Paris. We have an office in New York, okay. and I have a little office in London. Okay. So it's, the model has changed completely. We no longer have galleries, but we have by appointment offices mm -hmm. with viewing rooms, mm -hmm. and we participate in art fairs. That's our way of exhibiting. So where do you keep this magnificent collection? In storage, storage. <laughs> secret space. <laughs> Mostly storage. <laughs> I see. Nothing secret. All right. yeah. The reason I I ask about Paris, I probably was confused. I I remember you mentioned that you're based in London, but you speak with the several people came by and you speak French. I mean, how many languages do you speak? <laughs> um, three. Well, okay. I speak French, English, and Greek. Greek. Yeah. My, I lived in Greece for 15 years. Oh, wow. Yes, and, uh, and I speak a little bit of Italian and a bit of Spanish, but those are very rusty. So you... Were I, I went to school in... in a, I went to a French school in New York. You were born in New York, so... No, New I was born in London. Oh, my God. <laughs> just <laughs> to just make things easy. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your first language? What would you I say? I would say French. French. Yeah, yeah French okay. and English, but our household is very French. Do you study art history, or is it because you just grew up in uh, this... Uh, Mostly. artsy <laughs> household <laughs> well it mostly came from growing up in an, a very mm -hmm. you know surrounded by art right. um, I did study a bit of art history but I didn't do it very formally mm -hmm. and then I just worked um, I worked at Christie's then I worked for an, a contemporary art foundation in Greece I also uh, worked very briefly at the Metropolitan Museum in New York and 
and then I worked on catalog resumes and and so you know it's just yeah. you learn different ways. Yeah. Ah, what do you have today? So we, uh, I think, booth. I think it's probably one of our most beautiful booths that we've ever had at at a fair. I agree. And we've really pulled out some fantastic works, mm -hmm. all the way from old masters, a lot of 17th, 18th century oh French works, mm -hmm. um, to this tapestry, Renaissance, French Renaissance tapestry from the mm -hmm. Chateau d'Annette, mm -hmm. which is really very, very rare. Um, is it silk? It is, uh, I believe it's silk, yes. Okay. <laughs> and it was made for Diane de Poitiers by Henri II, well, commissioned by Henri II for Diane de Poitiers. Okay. Um, part of a series of about eight or ten tapestries, of mm -hmm. which two are at the Metropolitan Museum. Wow. Two are at the Musée de la Renaissance, I think, in Écouen and four which had remained at the Chateau d'Annette, which mm -hmm. burned while they were being restored in the 1990s. Oh, wow. So this is one of the last Remaining. ones on, in private hands. Yeah. Nice. So for me, this is kind of one of the highlights of the booth. Okay. But I do really like our more modern side, mm -hmm. especially the Boldini and the Bonar. Mm -hmm. the, so one of, the, one of our best works is probably the painting of Boldini, by Boldini of wow. Cléo de Merod, mm -hmm. who was a Belgian aristocrat. Um, quite infamous, but also very famous for her for her beauty and and uh, and her talent. Mm -hmm. She was a dancer um, and just one of the most beautiful people of of the time. We're very very pleased to be in Maastricht. Okay, thank you so much. Now let's learn about Cefaf Museum Restoration Fund. My name is Paul van den Biesen. I'm uh -huh. working for TEFAV mm -hmm. and part of my team is the organization of the Museum Restoration Fund. Mm -hmm. TEFAV is a foundation that stands for the European Fine Art Foundation and part of the foundation is the philanthropy mm -hmm. um, uh, support of museums in restoring masterpieces. Mm -hmm. So every year there's a contribution from all the exhibitors at TEFAV. Mm -hmm. They contribute a small fee which together is a larger fee mm -hmm. to support museum um, the restorations of museum um, projects. Mm -hmm. So every year there's a selection committee of independent schoolers and res restorers where uh, the applicants are being judged mm -hmm. and a selection being made and two mm -hmm. winners um, are chosen for a grant of 25,000 euros each okay. to support the restoration project. It's now the 11th year, mm -hmm. and so there are 22 uh, winners so far. Mm -hmm. And we work closely together with ICOM CC, mm -hmm. where we share also the knowledge of the projects. So there will be Every, at the fair there are different conversations, talks about the restoration project to share knowledge with the field. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very happy to be gratefully supported by Aeon as well, to be able to present um, the projects here at TEFA. For its 10 year anniversary last year, two works were chosen. Van Gogh's Poplis near Nuenen and the Hebrew prayer book from the 14th century. Uh, can you tell me about the winner of this year's uh, uh, rest Restoration Fund Award? So for the Maastricht edition, the winner is the Royal Museum in Antwerp, mm -hmm. where there is a beautiful painting, an old master 70th century Baroque painting of two girls dressed up like saints. Mm -hmm. And it's painted by the Flemish artist Michelena Wautier. And she was quite overlooked um, until now as a female artist in the collections of museums. And we're very proud to support the restoration so she can be added to the permanent collection again and be uh, admired by the public. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well. Cefaf is also a platform for modern and contemporary art. It's mainly exhibited at Cefaf New York, but there are several galleries here as well. I've been a fan of this French gallery for a while, Galerie Menor. The gallery was uh, established in 1999 mm -hmm. in Paris by uh, Camille Menor. Uh -huh. And uh, at the beginning, the gallery uh, was uh, focused into photography. And okay. then uh, we started to represent some uh, 
uh, emerging artists and uh, international artists uh, from contemporary art. And uh, now we represent more than 40 artists and we have a team of 50 people working at the gallery. Can you please tell me what you have today? It's a very beautiful booth, you know, and the floor and the mirrors and the sculptures. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially for TEFAF, mm -hmm. we, we are doing our best to have a statement booth. So we decided to uh, create a dialogue between two art uh, figures, uh, Anish Kapoor and Daniel Buren. Mm -hmm. But we start with Daniel Buren, mm -hmm. uh, with the works that we are representing here from 65 and uh, also Daniel Buren designed especially for us the, all the booths, the floor, the mirror, and we decided to create a dialogue with three sculptors by Anish Kapoor. Mm -hmm. Two are in alabaster from Italy and another one is in granite. So it's a very strong dialogue and we are very happy uh, to show that in Tefaf here in Maastricht. It's probably like closer to the end of the uh, show. How was it? <laughs> it was fantastic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the fair is, here is so interesting because it's a crossover between uh, mm -hmm. uh, old masters, ancient art and modern and contemporary art. So for us it's also very important to show uh, our artists uh, with a, a very uh, deep dialogue with history. Mm -hmm. And you probably are coming next to New York, right? Sefaf New York, will we see you there? Absolutely, mm -hmm. we will do amazing projects mm -hmm. uh, with many, many important works. Is it and a secret to give me a little bit of a preview who you're gonna bring? It's, it's a secret, okay. but I just can tell you as a scoop that it will be, uh, the name of the booth will be uh, un goût français, so a French taste, so it is the idea of, of the, the French elegance, the French way of living with art in a living room, so we have a very specific, very VIP guest that will be the curator of the booth, so I cannot tell uh, the name of uh, this person, but I can tell you that it will be a great, great booth. Right, let it be a surprise for us. <laughs> and last but not least, I get to talk to the official representative of TIFAF board, its chairman. My name is Hede van Segenen. Mm -hmm. I'm the owner of um, the gallery with the same name, okay. and at the same time also the president of TIFAF, mm -hmm. the European Fine Art Fair, mm -hmm. uh, also no known as the European Fine Art Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please, uh, let's start with the gallery, maybe, first. Tell me a little bit about the gallery, when it was established, and then uh, maybe you'll talk about your function as a chairman of TIFAF. So I started my gallery in London uh, more than 15 years ago mm -hmm. with a contemporary program, first in German Street, and then I moved to uh, West London. Mm -hmm. and about five years ago we moved to Germany with my family and I've established a new gallery in Hamburg in the north of Germany. Artists also coming from Germany, but also from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because you are Dutch and you started your career in a foreign country and again you moved to a foreign country. <laughs> You're like a world traveler. <laughs> why, why don't you have a gallery here in uh, the Netherlands? No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, we, live, we live in Europe and, and uh, the, the art market is, is wide and I, I, I like living in, in, in different cultures and also learning. It's mm -hmm. also, uh, as a gallerist, you also learn mm -hmm. and you, you, you want to develop yourself, otherwise life is boring. I studied law and also cultural history at the University of Amsterdam. Okay. And, um, but I've worked very briefly in documentary filmmaking in the beginning before I moved, to, moved to London. Interesting. Uh, law is a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, subject to study, mm -hmm. but uh, I've always been drawn, in, to, yeah, art. drawn to art and wor work with art. And mm -hmm. I've, I've made it, but um, I, I, I really like being a gallerist, representing li living artists, mm -hmm. what they make and presenting it in the best possible way. Uh, how many languages do you speak? I speak three or four languages. Which are? Well, Dutch, English, French. Okay. And no Limburgish? No, no I don't speak <laughs> Limburgish. Yeah. Okay, this is the area, Limburg, <laughs> the capital. Are you a northerner or a southerner? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm right from the center. So I'm from a, a city called Utrecht. Oh. But I lived in the south, in, in Brabant. I can speak a Brabant accent. Can you please talk to me a little bit about your role as the FAF chairman. How did it happen? 
I, I've been a member of the board for quite a number of years. Is it hard to become a board member? It, it, is, it is not hard to become a board member, but it's, it's a group of people that uh, are, are ma that. mainly dealers. And we are an organization, we are a foundation in essence, um, uh, for dealers, by dealers. So how do you become a chairman? I was elected about three years ago okay. um, as, as a chairman, and I'm now the president of the executive committee. Is it for like four years or um, lifetime? <laughs> no, it, it, it used, used to be, let's say, in, indefinite, but we've changed this. So people are now elected for uh, a num number of years, and there's a rotation in, uh, being installed for the foundation. Okay. Um, but we do this together. Uh, I've been elected chairman, but we have a, a wonderful executive committee with five of my colleagues and there's a wonderful board so and there's also a TAFE of team mm -hmm. which basically runs the organization globally mm -hmm. both in New York and also in Maastricht. This must be my cue to end. Yeah, okay, I caught you like last minute. It's, it is wonderful to be back with a full fair. Last June we had a, a fair which basically an interim fair when we came out of Covid now we're back uh, with all the dealers. It's really a wonderful experience to be back mm -hmm. um, in the, at the ori original time slot in March. Right. Uh, but it's not without uh, challenges. Huh? It's, uh, it's really wonderful that all the dealers came and that we've, we've built this fair again. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I appreciate you're, very, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming to Maastricht TEFAF. Of course. From Maastricht, I'm Jane Greaves. See you soon in New York.